Hi artist, Shelly here. Today I want to talk to you about painting a large multi-figure piece. I'll be focusing on two of the figures, both trappers from about the late 1800s. Here's a look at my reference image taken on location in Kansas and my palette. The lighting was nothing special coming from directly overhead on an overcast day. Not the greatest, but not the worst either. So with that in mind, I'll be playing with my saturation levels, contrast and shadows, along with my brushwork to punch up the excitement in this portrait. Do you find painting small portraits more difficult than larger, say, life-size heads? I know I do. This painting is 45 inches wide by 26 inches tall, which is pretty large for me with the heads only reaching a whopping one and a half to two inches. And that's including their hats. So the whole time I'm painting, I'm telling myself, okay, this is just like painting a life-size head. Just pretend in your mind that this is a life-size head and do it exactly the same way. So with that in mind, the way that I paint is I'm just laying down a brush stroke and moving to the next brush stroke. So what it ended up being like is just basically painting with dots of color throughout this face and building up. I started with the top of the head and I moved down and then through the face, the nose and into the beard. And I'm just laying down little tiny shapes of paint just like I would as if it were a full size head and I'm just trying to capture every little shape and get the right value and color laid down and in the right spot, just the same as I would with a full size head. I'm working with pretty small brushes. This is a size one and it's a soft kind of um, synthetic sable. And I would occasionally work with my flat uh, number four brush. And in the larger areas, I like to use some of my softer, um, like about a quarter inch comber brush. And that was pretty much it throughout the face. These small brushes allowed me to make these teeny tiny um, shapes of color. And you know, I don't like to blend, so I'm just laying down each shape and each color in the correct value next to each other or slightly on top of one another. And just to help me kind of see the contrast a little bit better, I put in some of the darker areas along the eyes and the um, side of the face because I knew I was going to be coming in with the fur of that hat and putting those little fur brush marks on top of that darker color so it would really make the hat stand out away from the face. I did not have a magnifying glass, although looking back, that may have been a good idea to really see how I was laying down these brush marks. I am wearing my glasses, of course, but I don't know, maybe a magnifying glass would have helped me uh, move this along a little better. Do you guys ever use a magnifying glass? Let me know in the comments. The other thing I'm thinking about while I'm doing this portrait is this figure is in the foreground. He's one of the main vocal points. So I want to paint him with a high degree of detail and finish. And as I move further away from him and moving back into the picture plane, then my brush strokes are going to get a little softer, a little blurrier, and a little less saturated. And it's funny too, I mean I'm painting really fast here for you guys, but in reality, I think it probably took me about 40 minutes to paint this little tiny two inch head, which is just about the same amount of time as it would take me to um, get almost finished with a full size head as far as you know laying down most of the features and the important parts. Have any of you ever struggled with painting a small face like this in a larger painting? Um, let me know in the comments. Tell me if you have any tips or tricks to making it a little smoother uh, situation. Not finding painting this tiny as fun as I do the fuller size heads. I've moved over to using my number four flat um, 
synthetic brush. I really like using the flats because you can get nice broad marks or you can turn it on its side and get a thin, wispy, kind of fur-like edge, which you see me doing here. I love painting fur and this is going to be kind of cool the way that the fur hat comes down and then moves close um, surrounding his beard which is kind of a similar texture. There's a lot of texture in this portrait in fact. So we've got fur, we've got the hair and the beard, the um, shirt is kind of a suede and then we've got the metal from the gun, we've got that kind of I think it's a, some sort of pheasant feather coming out of the hat. So lots of cool textures happening here. I haven't named this painting yet. I'm still waiting for the name to kind of emerge to me as I work through the piece. Um, it's basically telling the story of two trappers set in about the late 1800s. And there's some unexpected um, guests arriving. <laughs> I'm not going to give it completely away. I'd like to um, show you the finished painting once I have it completely done. At this point, it's not completely done, so I'm not going to be showing you the full actual painting, but you'll see a good portion of it. But maybe you guys can help me think of a name once you do see the full painting. It's always fun to get feedback on naming paintings, and I'd love you guys' ideas on what we can call it. But basically, um, so you got two trappers, they're in the uh, sort of a wooded countryside area and they're in front of this strange structure that's been built and set into part of the hill. Um, it could be early morning. It's definitely not a nocturnal scene. I'm using pretty um, bright light where the sun, I'm having the sun aim at them from the top left. So there's going to be some bright yellows coming out in the background and a little bit in the grass near um, the feet of the horse that the trappers are standing next to or sitting on top of. And then as you get closer to the forefront of the picture plane, I'm going to use a little bit more dark colored uh, greens to depict some of the grass and help frame out and give some depth into the picture plane. The other thing I am constantly thinking about is the fact that I am not painting things, I'm painting light, light effects. I'm painting the way that the light is reflecting or shining on to the objects or the portrait, the person. I want to play with the light and push it. So I'm not painting exactly what I see. Once I have the portrait down, I'll probably go back in and push some of the contrast so that I can really affect uh, the lighting situation. And here you can see I'm adding in little bits of highly saturated color to help draw the eye to the focal point, trapper number one. These little bits of color are not randomly placed or chosen. I chose them, I'm only using a little bit of the red, the yellow, and the blue in tiny areas throughout the painting. So this will help give me some direction in guiding the viewer's eye through the painting and making sure they land on my vocal point. Okay, we're moving into the hands. Oh man, these are some really great hands to paint. I should actually zoom in and try painting these hands for you more large, more life-size. That'd be fun. But I'm enjoying painting them even though they are super duper tiny. You can only imagine if his head is about two inches, including the hat, these hands are probably 0 0.5, 0 0.75 inches. Um, they're really tiny. But I'm going to make sure that I continue 
thinking about them the way that I thought about the face and painting the portrait and just laying down little bits of brush marks and leaving them, not blending them, so that I can channel my John Singer Sargent brush marks and get these hands painted in as few of brush strokes as possible, yet still making sure they look realistic and painterly at the same time. So you can see I had a little bit of an underpainting started, but I didn't draw in with any amount of detail the hands. I just basically left a little lighter spot that would remind me this is where the hands are gonna go. And that um, hand that's further away from us, I'm painting that now, uh, It I didn't leave any direction for it is at all. So I'm basically using um, comparison measurements. So I'm looking at the first hand that I painted and using that as the guide as to where I put my shapes of light and dark colors down to create the image, the illusion <laughs> of this second hand. And while I'm painting these hands, I'm constantly reminding myself, where is the light coming from? What is the direction of the light that is going to drive the position of my shadows that help the hands read as realistic and true to the lighting situation? And in this case, the light is from above on the left slightly, and it's kind of a overcast day, but I'm gonna push it, as I said, to be more of a sunlit day. It's really great if you can get your own really well taken, really well done um, reference images, but we're not photocopiers. We're painters, we're artists. We don't want to copy the photo directly to its completeness. I don't need another photograph. I have that already. I could blow that up and put it on my wall and call it a day. So I really want to make sure that I put in my artistic flares, my creative thought processes, processes, how do you say that? <laughs> and really make it something interesting to look at beyond what could be um, grass or taken with a camera. I really want to push the creative thinking. And I'm gonna share with you later on when I get towards um, finishing this piece, what were the super creative things that I pushed? And that could have to do with the storytelling, the lighting, or just some of the elements and the way that they're handled. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you and I'm excited to do so, so hopefully it'll be soon. But I want you guys to remember that. I want you to take your photographic images, hopefully you've taken them yourself. That's the first step to really putting your creative stamp on whatever it is you're painting, but then push it. Go ahead and ask yourself, what if? What if I did this? What if I did that? And really go ahead and just put it out there. And it's really cool if you are talented or skilled enough in Photoshop um, you can test out some of these ideas, some of these what ifs in Photoshop before you're actually painting and see if you like the way your what if is looking in your composition. So that's just a thought I had. Okay, we're wrapping up our first figure, Trapper number one, 
And here's a look at the finished portrait of Trapper number one, including his horse. <laughs> and so it's time to get started on this guy, Trapper number two. Here's a look at my palette pre-mixed. I added a little bit of Cad Red Light to my already um, addressed palette. And here we go. So his face is even smaller <laughs> than the first figure. But here we go. I'm keeping the same thought process happening. I want to lay down the little tiny dots of color pretty much in the right place with the right value and with the right color selected. And just don't blend those brush marks. Just lay them down either side by side or slightly overlapping and build that face up as if it were a full size head. And to make matters a little more complicated, I feel like, it is a profile portrait that I am actually painting here. So it's a teeny tiny profile, <laughs> which means I need to get the shape of the forehead and the nose, and you can't see the mouth because of the beard, so even the shape of the beard is important on that left side, the outline along that profile. It needs to be really exact. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Hey, if you're getting some value, hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and come along with me on my art journey. So in order for me to really show that profile, I needed to put down some of the background. So there's some rocks framing out this subject. So I'm adding those in where I need to and then going back over the face and really pushing that edge. I'm trying to keep it pretty hard so I get the profile down. And yes, that hat is a little wonky at the moment, but I promise you I will fix it. <laughs> So I'm not using any um, black on my palette. So in order to get the idea of black, as you see here, I've mixed together the green, the blue, and some of the reds on my palette to get this deep, dark, it's really a dark, dark red, but it reads as black in the painting. I wanted to be sure to capture the movement in this figure and the fringe on the shirt is going to allow me to do that. So I'm going to push the um, kind of flowiness, the direction of the fringe to help read that this figure is in motion. And the other thing I did was I added a little stripe of white down the sleeve with some uh, markings on it that picked up those same blue red yellow colors from the other figure and I'm pushing the red in his neckerchief his little scarf to also help pull in and guide the eye of the viewer through the painting not slaving over the idea of keeping true to my reference image I'm the master of my painting and I'm going to take control of the colors and make adjustments and do what I need to do in order to make this the best painting that I can and to also make it the painting that I see in my mind. Here we go, another teeny tiny hand <laughs> and it's holding a pistol. So I definitely wanna make sure that I get the finger and thumb placement depicted correctly so it reads as a hand drawing a pistol. Or perhaps he's not drawing, perhaps he's replacing the pistol. I don't know. It depends on how you view the picture. <laughs> and I throw in a little bit of fan brush just to knock down glare and smooth everything out with a little bit of brushiness and then I go back in as I usually do 
and put in detail over top of those fan brush uh, smoothness areas. So let's uh, finish up trapper number two, the second figure in my very large painting. And here's a look at him all finished up for you. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see his face. And thank you so much for watching and being part of my journey. And I'll see you guys in the next one.